Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Make Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got some special guests in the building. Yes, indeed. We have Terrell Owens and Matthew Hatchet. Terrell. Welcome, Ye- guys. Terrell, man. Terrell. 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 Just say T.O. Uh, uh, and Hatch. Yeah, just say T.O. Yeah. And Hatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah and Hatch. Man, media has been just butchering my name. <laughs> <laughs> T.O. Is so they're so used to saying T.O. all these years. That's why. No, you get, you get guys that's supposed to, journalism, that's mm-hmm. supposed to, you know, adhere to that. Then they get on TV and pronounce my name incorrect. But... So many times I've told him it's terrible. It's terrible. Terrible. Well, Owens. Terrible. 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 Then they get on the air. Terrible. Terrible. But, but, but your first five, six years, you didn't mind them mentioning no, your name. You didn't say no, nothing. You, you didn't know, say yes, nothing. Then you got big no. and you wanted to be like, yo, no, no my name. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. My mom named me. My mama named me Terrell Owens. Okay. I've never gone by Terrell. Okay. So you're just like the rest of it. Wow. Well, thank wow. you. There's no journalist in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a bunch of niggas with opinions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, y'all got a podcast called the Get Your Popcorn get, Ready Podcast. Yeah, get your, re- yeah, get get your, your popcorn, popcorn ready. ready. Uh, Not get your, but get your popcorn get your. ready. I was going to ask a dumb question. Why do y'all do a podcast together? But I can already tell. That. <laughs> all y'all do is debate all day. They've been all, all since they got day. Yes. Back so what did before. you guys think of the XFL? Ooh. I, I, thought, it was, I thought it was a great first week. You know, as far as it looking like football, um, now it's going to, you know, can they have that longevity is going to be yeah. the question. But for the first week, I thought it was good football for after what the Super Bowl was. But you I think, you I support think, it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. always going to support, especially guys that are trying to expand their careers or trying to get to that next level, trying to get into the NFL. So, you know, Vix McMahon, I mean, he's offering, putting that platform for guys to, to really, you know, fulfill their dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, I think they're doing a disservice not having – some marquee names, you know, on that platform right now. When you think about the Colin Kaepernick's and guys like that, that could obviously, I think, push the league forward. I think Cap wanted too much money. I yeah. think they should have gave Cap some equity in the actual league. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's something. They need a star. They need somebody where fans can go to and say, I want to see this person play. Absolutely. But how do you balance yeah. that if financially a star wants too much money, but they don't have it right now? They put like half a billion to build a league. You trying to say that they don't have money? Yeah. I don't it's know like, if they're yeah. saying well, they're they, 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 they they on a budget, money. right? Okay. They can only spend so much money per year. And what they're saying is, like I said, all the other players are not going to be able to get paid anything if they pay this one star the money. So again, that's, that's how the league is. And that's how the NFL is. That but it wasn't like that at the beginning, though. But that should have been part of the infrastructure. If you're going to build build a league like that mm-hmm. you should allocate some funds mm-hmm. to guys marquee marquee guys yeah. I, I, I don't think that's their the blueprint league. i don't think that's their plan though their plan is they're just going to build this league to be more of a, a farm league for the nfl and then in three but years yeah. that money's going to equal five billion dollars and they're not worried about paying one player five million dollars right now besides colin kaepernick who could you see as a marquee player that they could bring in terrell on see if he still got it <laughs> <laughs> it looked like he still got it you still yeah, terrell, man. Man. i said hey. t.o <laughs> t.o still got hey. it terrell always. bring him in they're going to have to pay me. Yeah. Yeah. How much you, okay, how much you want? That's the question. <laughs> I, 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 say, I have a 10 Put it off by the season. table. How, how, how much you want? They're paying players 55000 right now. Huh? Fifty five. No, that's right the right average. Now. Some people get paid more than that. 55000 is the average. five mil. At five mil a to, season? Okay. That's at least. To do that's what? It. You ain't go do nothing. <laughs> wow. What are you talking about? <laughs> For somebody that has six touchdowns <laughs> in eight <laughs> years. Hey, <laughs> that's, who's hey that's all right. I got one I'm left in me, needle. though. I'm I got. Needle. First of all, how do y'all know each other? We skipped over that part. How did uh, this happen? Oh, man. We, like 20 years ago, yeah, uh, we was at the, with the Vikings. Right. Okay. When he was at, with the 49ers. And I was, with the 49ers. And I was doing a, um, like a celebrity basketball game weekend and i remember we met at the airport just randomly he mm-hmm. was going somewhere i was going somewhere what's up you hey hey, man, hey i'm t.o but they call me <laughs> terrell on uh <laughs> on, the, on espn with a real name i was like forget all that like, i'm happy like, but in the hood i'm terrell oh, so right, you just, right, right, right. so you just introduced yourself to him yeah we saw each other just walking by <laughs> what did you think of him when you first met him um, honestly <laughs> well, we at the time we had the the top receiving core in the league, oh, right? And the 49ers <laughs> thought they had the top. Oh, you receiver. had that's when you had Randy Moss and Chris yeah, Carter. Chris Carter, so Randy Moss, myself, and Jake the- Reed. Right mm-hmm. was another Got dude. You. So we had we had like four was, dudes. Was the big three, the, the, the his version of the big three, he included himself. But Absolutely, said, it was Jake Reed, Chris Carter, and Randy Moss. So yeah. actually, the big four actually, no, and, and they that. had JJ Stokes, him, and Jerry Rice. So but when we, we were to pl- when, when the Vikings played the, the 49ers, I would always have a good game, and he was over there. Hey, Hash, I like that dude. That's my guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I was like, I appreciate the support. And so we. <laughs> what, did you think, you got your- so what did you think about him when you met him? Uh, 
What was your first? Is he a cool dude? Or oh, he is he was cool. he's quiet. Mm -hmm. People like I said now he the, the camera's on and the microphone's in his face, so now you go see the you know lit up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But he's really quiet. He mm -hmm. don't he don't be doing nothing. He just be walking around New York. Two o'clock in the morning, not saying nothing. Why the hell are you walking around New York two o'clock in the morning? Yeah, answer ain't no that prostitutes question. out here no more in these streets. <laughs> What's up, T.O.? What you doing? <laughs> hey, where's hoodie on? Where's hoodie on? In the sunglasses. See what type of friends I got. So he's saying when the cameras come on, you're a different person. He turns up. Yeah. He turns up. That, that's yeah. honestly how it was when I was when I was younger. And mm -hmm. then, you know, uh, like I said, I'm pretty pretty quiet, reserved. An I'm an introverted extrovert. And so um, that's how my coaches described me too when I played. So when the lights came on, that was kind of like when I was at my best. That's interesting because you had a whole reality show too for a couple of seasons. Yep. yep Mo and Kita, you still cool with them? No. Oh. Damn. Damn. Well, you said that abruptly. <laughs> like, yeah. And he, and I'm sure he will vouch for him. He, 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 he what don't happened. He, he, I don't yeah, know what happened. That's they, that's their family yeah, feud, we, if you yeah. will. But uh, yeah, that, that no reconciling that. When your mom tells you about certain people, and she's done that with a few people that I've had in my circle, mm -hmm. they were one of the, those two were one of the people she's like, watch out for them. Mm. Were they friends before the show or? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, you know, they started to kind of get a name based on the T.O. show mm -hmm. and then found out, you know, they were trying to get a show behind my back, things of that nature. And so I just kind of just, you know, parted ways and I just left it at that. Nothing that could be reconciled? Man, I moved on. That's been like 10, mm -hmm. some, mm. almost 10 years ago. I just remember because yeah. I used to watch the show. So that's why it's interesting to be an ex uh, introvert. But then, you know, we see you on TV right. doing that. So I, was that difficult for you to kind of put yourself out there? We watched you like dating and. Uh, no, not at all. I think um, as I progressed and excelled in, in football and being in front of the cameras and uh, things of that nature, I mean, it was kind of once you get on cameras, kind of just second nature, you, you don't really realize the cameras are there. So you just go about your, you know, everyday, everyday life. And so that was kind of the gist of the show. Initially, when we pitched the show, they wanted to kind of be sort of a dating show. Mm -hmm. And oh, then once Lord. the producers Please behind don't. the scene, they saw the dynamic between myself, Mo and Keto, what have you. And they was like, oh man, you guys have a great relationship, blah, blah, blah. blah. So it took a left turn. Hats, you can't grow. You was on Millionaire Matchmaker. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I forgot you, about that. <laughs> did y'all did, did, uh, did did need, need the money at the time when y'all did this reality show? Like, no, it was, did you that need that the money? was around the time that the, the reality show phase was, was popping. Was, was popping. Yeah, it was yeah. trending hot. up. And so then. Was it worth it though? Did they pay a lot? Was like, oh, I yeah, 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 it was cool. I mean, I understood. More than the XFL? <laughs> <laughs> I, Fact, I started yeah. to learn a lot about the business behind the mm -hmm. scene, understanding executive producer credit, you know, being on camera. So you were getting like two checks. Gotcha. Um, so those are some of the things that I, you know, I took from the show. But again, like I said, that was that part of, of my life. And mm -hmm. um, it was what it was. I mean, everybody still asked me about that show today. Yeah, Man, you no, guys, it was good. You, 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 you going to do another show, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now, one thing about Matchmaker uh, now, now, what's, what, now, he was a million dollar matchmaker. How'd he do? Yeah, that's a horrible, horrible <laughs> story. Let's move on. Millionaire Life after football is rough, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you were the millionaire. Uh, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's TV. It's, everything is fake. You know what I'm saying? So he just puts you in the room with a bunch of, you know, girls and like you're supposed to pick one, but um, the, the, Patty. That doesn't seem too bad if you're single. It, it, it was cool, but it's still, it's, they're he's not really still available. You still single, so it didn't <laughs> work. It didn't work. It didn't oh, work. So you, you didn't get lucky. You ain't hit nothing. It, 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 it didn't work. Quite it didn't work. You know Is it weird saying? to know? Did you, did you have sex with anybody on the show? <laughs> you know what? I did not. Okay. And I can, I think, if I can remember. <laughs> if I can remember. CT, Is it weird that a woman just went <laughs> <a> millionaire? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no, by the way, that's a good uh, excuse when you're in a relationship. Just forget everything. <laughs> hey, I, don't I don't think remember. I got CTE. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what you say, it's funny, but it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> it's is, it, is it weird, though, to know that a woman wants to be with the millionaire? Like, to go on a show like that and you know th that you're the millionaire and these women are vying for you because, and that's part of the reason? Um, you don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to be on the show. Yeah, to, that's to like every that. day in LA, yeah. really. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of like that's that the show. dating game. They Google you. If they see your face on something, they automatically think that, you know, you're this person. In, in that way so they kind of want to date you for that reason but we've been around the game for a long time and we done seen you know seen it come from every direction so none of that surprises us do they really have classes in the NFL like where they teach you about women when you first get in the league not classes but have like seminars like we yeah. used to do this thing called the rookie symposium right. um, and they would come in and <laughs> discuss all these things you're supposed to do you know how you're supposed to handle your money how you're supposed to handle females, females. domestic violence what do they tell you about they, females? they, they you show you videos females? of Darren Sharper and say this is not what you want to yeah, do yeah that was that was an example run, yeah, during yeah, that, really, time. Around that time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, and there's something every, every day. Pretty, like the, this, 
Okay. The 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 Baker Mayfield thing that came out yesterday. You know, that'll probably that. be you didn't see that? The, the girl a girl came out saying she um I guess had oral sex with Baker like a couple months ago mm-hmm. in his truck and she came out and told the whole story and he's married, so they had her do an interview on, you know, on a radio show. And I'm sure next year in training camps they'll be talking about that, how to handle that situation. Oh, how so do- those situations like Greg Hardy, Darren Sharp, they yep. really show you that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How do, so how do you handle that? Oof. If you had to, you had to, married, if you so. had to give advice to well, a player, if, if how do you? If you're married, mm-hmm. stay your butt in the house. Yeah. Black men don't <laughs> cheat anyway. What is that? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that, <laughs> way, Baker is white, so yeah, you know, yeah. Right. There you go. Yes. So how did the podcast come come together? <laughs> um, I said, whose idea was it? Uh, it was my idea. <laughs> it was my idea. It was my no. So, look, no, be. look. Your idea was just guess. He wanted a podcast with himself. Shocker. <laughs> right. Shocker. <laughs> and I I had been pitching for a show for like two two years prior. And so it d- didn't work out. And then it Because was, it was I, by I, himself. No, it has nothing to do with it. Uh, I was with an agency and then that situation didn't uh, you know uh dissolve. Right. So yeah, so uh he was we got to talking about doing a podcast and so he was like, you know, what do you think about it? I was like, Yes, I've been working on it anyway. Uh, trying to get one anyway. So I'm like, we have a great di- dynamic. And so mm-hmm. been friends for years. Uh, he claims to have, you know, a lot of knowledge about. You know, I have nothing. a lot of knowledge. Stop playing. Uh, and so uh, then I was like, okay, cool. It's somebody. <laughs> so that would be with, my idea. With, right. You just... with or what have you. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let's just let's see what we can do. So why you let his name go first then? If it was your That's idea. That's what I said. I was I, like, my name should be first. Him. Nobody no, knows him. I got <laughs> hey, I got about 13 fans out there <laughs> well, and they loyal. Well, you have to be honest, right? If you see the podcast and you see Terrell Owens and Matthew Hatchin, it's called Get Your Popcorn Ready. I know. You're going to think it's T.O.'s podcast because of the whole popcorn with thing. T.O. Right. and Hatch. And, and, I, and, I, and I tried <laughs> for I tried for weeks to think of a different name and I couldn't think of one exactly. better so I had to I did have to give him that name and say yeah get your popcorn nothing ready. wrong with being yeah. humble about things right yeah yeah I think it's a good look for me when, now, the, last, when the last time you've been humble about something Tio <laughs> I've always been my, my humbleness has been manageable what? Explain. What, what does that Explain. Mean? I'd, like, I'd, like, I'd like to expound on that expound. <laughs> no I mean I've always been humble you know mm-hmm. for, for, for I guess if you're asking I guess it's based on perception mm-hmm. so with me like I said I know how I was raised I was raised the right way my grandmother grew up in the uh, under the household of my grandmother. So again, I've always appreciated, you know, who has helped me get me where I where I am now. Um, the things that people have seen or heard, you know, I guess about me, again, it's based on perception, media perception or portrayal. But at the end of the day, when I'm on, on the field, on playing, you know, that's my, my, I guess my confidence has been, off, you know, grossly misconstrued as being arrogant. Mm. I so. feel like you have to have a healthy ego, though, right? Especially to. in sports, it's right? Professional sports, right. you got to be way more confident than not confident. Mm-hmm. You know? How do you think your ego helped uh, and hurt you in the league, Tio? Um, I think, well, if you don't know me, then, of course, you're not going to know how to perceive me. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, when it related to, uh, I guess, let's say the Hall of Fame, when I was nominated first first time around and then the second time around, and so the narrative was that I was a bad teammate, mm-hmm. you know, locker room problems, things of that nature. But my defense was no no players have ever come out and said that I was that that the media ha- had you know, put out there. So for me, I just went ahead and just blocked out the noise and just was true to who I was, believed in my abilities and, and know that I was doing the right thing. I had coaches you know, that were served as like father figures, like big brothers to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you talk about my receiver coaches that work with me on an everyday basis, they will pull me to the side. They will let me know if I was doing something wrong. Every every stop that I've made, I've had those coaches that pull me to the side. I'm like, yo, you're not doing anything wrong. And these were black coaches at that. They knew what was going on in those locker rooms, regardless of what was being reported about me. So that gave me confidence to still be who I was, be outspoken. And when I was in press conferences or what have you, post game or whatever, if they asked me, you know, what happened during the course of the game or my feelings about the game, I gave you the real. I wasn't gonna sh- shy away from what happened. If I felt like I was, you know, should have been more involved in, in, in a certain capacity or during the game, then that's what I did. I wasn't thinking about speaking PC, you know what I mean? Right. It's, you know, like I said, I never had an issue when we won games. If we lost games and I didn't get involved enough or I didn't get enough touches or catches, then that's where I had a problem because I, I felt like 
with what I with, with what I did on the football field, it spoke volumes. You know, to have Jerry Rice is sort of like he set the barometer for who I was trying to be. And then once I realized I couldn't be Jerry, I kind of stepped into my own own shoes. I realized, okay, this is the this is the ability that I have. They end up making him leave, me filling his shoes. So that it gave me a lot of confidence. Okay, this is what I can do um, to help move this organization forward. And so those are some of the things that again, you know, that have been uh, grossly got I guess a big mis misconception. Uh, it, it had to hurt in the later years though, right? Like when you were still in shape, clearly you could still play. But they didn't. Clearly, they didn't want you in the league anymore. That so so yeah, maybe that yes, neg <clears throat> the negativity sells. And mm -hmm. so again, at the end of the day, yeah, that's it's now. I, I think with the plat social media platforms that you know we have now, I think I could have dispelled some of that, some of those things. Mm -hmm. um, it's similar to the situation of like the Gail King Les uh, Lisa Leslie interview when that get you you see sound bites or snippets, and you don't get the entirety. Uh, of the interview. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the things that I had going on that I tried to go in and dispute or try to give my side of the story. I would do an interview with somebody like a Deion Sanders or Andrea Kramer mm -hmm. for like an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. But then they would break the that those hour and a half down to like five, 10 minutes. And, and get that headline. A, right, mm -hmm. and then you have a panel of guys that are critiquing that little sound bite. They didn't hear the the, the, the entire the totality of, of the interview. So to hear my to, to, to hear my side of the story, so it compounded and made me look even worse. Mm -hmm. So it was like, what is the point of even me doing an hour and a half interview if you're not going to hear it in its entirety to to hear other elements of of, of the story? Right. And I, I've I've been a lot of places with T, and like ninety nine percent of that those negative you know things that are on the uh, on ESPN or Fox or whatever it usually comes from a personal basis mm -hmm. it's like I've been in a lot of places where he's because he's like I said he's in his he's on his phone has his uh sunglasses on he's just walking through places and people hey TT -T, and he doesn't really you know hear them it could be a fan but that one person might be a reporter and they're trying to talk to him so they're taking it as he's ignoring me right. and then all of a sudden a week later there's something negative about him that they're saying so well, it's coming from personal space. if they're saying Terrell then you can ignore them <laughs> because you can say that's not my name Nine times saying, out of ten, yes, I which do. they are, which right. they, yeah. because that's not my name. But again, I I get it for so many years. You know, the media has you know mispronounced my name. So again, I get it. But a lot of the fans, To or what have you, they'll say it. I mean, I'll acknowledge it or what have you. But you know, again, to to Hatch's point, like I mean, I've gone on show to dispute some of the things. Like I've gone on Shannon. And Skip show mm -hmm. and some of that and like and Skip has been like Skip hates you right. He's been he was the main <laughs> cover because he was a writer beat writer in San Francisco around the time, and so again he used me to kind of I guess put himself in the forefront I guess to be who he is catapult his career right right mm -hmm. and so um, all the things that he said about me they're not factual. I mean just because you speak to a coach or or a player in a like seventy five person uh, locker room they don't speak for the majority of the locker room. And so, as I said, I mean, guys have come out, you know, guys like Marcus Spear, who works for ESPN, and he played with me for three years in Dallas. And basically came as he played with me in that locker room, never once did I have an issue. But of course, according to some media outlets and mm -hmm. uh, people, I was an issue mm -hmm. in Dallas. Did you ever press Skip? Like, I know we see the TV sit down, but no, did no, you ever I, catch Skip? Out and about and like no, no, nah, and I've never no. seen really. I've never really seen him outside of the studio. What would you do? What would you do? No, I'm, but what you even, gonna do? Not you <laughs> gonna do? <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to do? I'm asking what you gonna yeah. do. <laughs> you got a lot of you got, got a lot of animosity about that dude. If I'm you not, see I'm him, not about, I'm not about that life. And oh, again, yeah. would you speak? Huh? Would you speak to him? No, I mean, I, I sometimes, you know, they say kill people with kindness. Sometimes mm -hmm. I kill them with blindness. I just act like I don't see them. That's why you keep your <laughs> shades on? Yeah, I, just, I just act like I don't see them. So you really don't fuck with Skip? No, not yeah. really. But like I said, I've gone on the show because I'm confident in who I am and what I've done mm -hmm. and my character. And so, again, over, over these years, like I said, I think he's done a disservice for who he is as a journalist to, to, to get, create false narratives and things about me. You think uh, he personally attacks you? Oh, no, no doubt, for sure. I mean, the whole T.O. obliterator thing, this, that, and the other. Um, I even Team went on, obliterator. Yeah, yeah. yeah I even went on the show. And again, you know, he said that was an issue in Dallas, and I've been removed from every stop, this, and that, and the other. But I went on the show with facts. Um, he said that was an issue. My character was an issue um, when I left Dallas. I went on this. I went on that show. When you get released from a team, they the team file as to why they let you go. So there's a number of boxes they could have checked. Mm -hmm. 
if it was conduct detrimental to the team, they could have checked, checked that. that box. Yeah. If it was anything, anything else, they would have checked that. But over the years, people, have, you know, he basically said, yeah, I, I was an issue in Dallas. But if that was the case, then one of those boxes would have been checked. But you know what box that was checked as to why they released me? It was performance based. Too slow. And I don't even know how that was because <laughs> I was the leading receiver. I was the leading receiver. I'm surprised y'all don't fight, man. I'm surprised y'all don't. Y'all don't never wrestle and move for it to one time. Slap uh, boxes. That's the only way you can stay relevant. <laughs> you don't even know who he is. <laughs> That's the only way you can stay Damn. Hey, you know Need what? Need on ground G money. He's going to take you to the roof, hey, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yeah, no, I'm going to throw him up one, off that joint, too. One time, I ain't fight one time. No, never. man, no, I, will, I will mop this young boy no. up, man. Don't oh play God. with me. No Come on, man. Now, listen, this we do have dude. Antonio Brown coming up here, right? He'll be here, I think, like sometime. Tomorrow. Either, oh, tomorrow. Man, so, y'all better, y'all better check you had that a, flight. A, a talk with him and then also. Why you say that? Why you say that? What time he's supposed to be here? Nine in the morning. Yeah, yeah, I have to check that, that flight. <laughs> That's so what do you I'm think saying. about what Roger Goodell had to say about you know wanting to help him out in the league? And I what don't do you, know. What did he say? He said he said that they want to make sure they help him. I think they're well, they're talking about him personally. I think that's probably more important for what he's going through right now. It seems like it's bigger than football. They're talking about his personal life, so they just want to make sure he doesn't literally like you know do something to himself hurt himself you know stuff like that i think that's more important for um guys who are just leaving the nfl or or on their way on their way out because again some guys don't know how to handle it some guys are going to you know do something detrimental to themselves and and i think that's what they're probably more worried about than him actually playing on a team now you guys been in the league for a long time oh wait i wanted to ask you what your conversation was like though with with um antonio um it was cool um like i said when i approached him and i went to his house it was more like i said i came i went over there as a friend Mm -hmm. you know first and foremost and like i said i i've witnessed you know media attacking uh attacking him um and at the end of the day that that was my message with him like yo i'm coming over here as a friend nothing else um you know if you need me for anything i'm here um even with the video that went out, like I said, we've had this discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is, you know, he he's a he's a father, he's a dad. I didn't like, you know, the way he was using the language in front of his kids, mm-hmm. this and that and the other. And whatever situations that he had in regards to the, the police, uh, his girlfriend or wife, whatever the case may be, handle that outside of the video camera. You know what I mean? I don't think it should have been, you know, publicized or, you know, shown out live stream to, to the world right. and again like i said those are his kids at the end of the day like i said you know he didn't have i'm i'm same same shoes i didn't have a father growing up he didn't have one growing up so we have a responsibility to be be better than what our fathers were to us and so that was kind of like my message to him but yep. I, I love ab good soul and again like i said he just has to has to, has to find him find himself find his way and surround him, you know, with uh, himself with the right people. I think he live streamed it to make sure the police wouldn't do nothing crazy to him. So it was like record. That's why I think yeah, he live streamed. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's cool. But again, like I said, the language, you right. know, the kids, right. this and that and the other. Again, those, that, that's something, again, you know, you got your kids going away in a police car. Right. You know, that's, for me, that wasn't a good look. Now, now talking mm-hmm. about kids, you guys been in the league a long time. We talked about CT a little bit earlier. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Would you allow your kids to play football? Yeah, I mean, I think they're trying to do whatever they can to make the game safer um, as they can. Um, But as you see, that's it's you know it's a violent sport, so it's inevitable. You're going to get hurt. Those are it's part of the game. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I've never really pushed my kids to play anything. Um, If they wanted to play sports, football, or what have you, then. I'm all for it. Like my son, he didn't start to like uh, 11th yeah, grade year. Yeah. Um, you know, he wanted to be wanted to play basketball. You know, his first couple of years, um, growing up and then in, in high school. And so now um, he decided late that he wanted to play football, so he's playing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Matthew? I'm not, I'm not sure yet, because, again, I don't have kids yet, so. What? Where, I know, right? Wait, condoms all those years in the league? Hey, you know what? I, I buy every condom that he has never bought. Because he's got, <laughs> cause he, he got, he got 25 kids, so that's how I look at that. <laughs> I, I love my kids, but I'm envious of you guys. I thought you were about to say, I love it, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But you said you, you wouldn't let your kid. You don't know if you let your kid I'm play. I'm not, not sure. 
sure. Yeah, because it's like, <laughs> you know, when your kid's like nine or ten, you, that's when you kind of let him play. And if he's the hammer, he's out there hitting everybody, getting up, saying, I, I love it. You're like, then you let that kid play. But if he's that kid that's kind of whining about it and, you know, crying and I got a hurt shoulder, a bloody nose, and I say, don't let that kid play. If he's the hammer, let him play. If he's the nail, don't let him play. Yeah, if they got the passion for it, the drive for it, then, yeah, I mean, why prevent or, you know, a kid from wanting to achieve their dreams you know yeah. what i mean the cte that, the injuries is what you know a lot of parents but that's, say that's yeah. part of the game that's always going to be something some recourse yeah. to to any sport that you that you yeah. play i and think i think obviously in, with football i mean yeah. that's that's one of the major ones i, th I think we're again I, I made this statement probably started 10 years ago i don't think the nfl was going to be around in 50 years and everybody really? thought i was crazy because of the money and if you just look at it it's just the field is too small for people as big and fast as they are. It's just too small, right? If you if you watch football games back 30 years ago, you've seen one or two people on the tackle. If you watch games now, there's nine dudes on every tackle because yeah, they yeah, get yeah, there yeah, so yeah. fast. So it's like, again, the game's going to have to change. It's evolved in certain ways, but the one thing that's, that can't change is the brain and how it moves inside of your head. So again, I don't know what they're going to do from the contact point of it, but it's going to have to change should, over these next should 30 Should they widen years. the field or lessen they the have players? To, they, what do you think? One of the two, okay. You know, if not both, you mm -hmm. know. But if something has got to change, where again, those well, twenty-two guys, is bigger, it's bigger, longer, right? Right, yeah. So right. maybe if they move it, possible, know, expand it to to, yeah. to those dimensions, yeah. then maybe it'll make it a little bit safer. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I hate when I see like a player get tackled and he try to get a few more yards and a bunch of people pile on. Like, bro, just yeah. go down. Go, get get your butt like, down. That's that, that's that mentality. Like, back in the South, throw it up, get tackled, whatever. You're going to turn and get every inch that you can. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, it's a game of inches. And yeah. as you saw in this, these last few uh, playoff games lead them to the Super Bowl, it literally was a game, game of, of inches. inches. Have you ever told a woman that in the bedroom? It's a game, game of, of inches. inches. No, I think they probably <laughs> already know that. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> now, um, did you guys watch the Aaron Hernandez, any of those documentaries? I did. I did. I watched a little bit. Oof. Actually, I, is That's it rough. three episodes or something like that? Three, three, part, so series. Yeah, three yeah. part series. Three part series. Three part series. I ended up watching it and got sucked into it. And, like, That's watched tough. Every, yeah, watched mm -hmm. every series. That's tough. Well, so every what did you think about, because there's a lot of different theories on what was going on with him mm -hmm. and people close to him speaking and uh, him speaking, you know, from jail. So... What was your take on Aaron Hernandez? I, th I think for one, I think the Florida Gators, the NFL, the NCAA, they all knew what was going on with him. And when you're- As that, a murderer? I don't know as a murderer, but as his character, and that character did murder people, I guess we're coming to find out. Mm -hmm. And when you're that good, they do what they have to do to keep things quiet. Mm. Wow. And that's the reality of what the NCAA, <clears throat> Florida, Big schools, Florida, Alabama's, Ohio State's, and of course NFL teams. Um, that's what they do, and I think it's it's sad because you know that guy's not going to live and to see his kids and grandkids stuff like that. But at the moment, nobody cares because he's scoring a touchdown for millions of people, and wow. that's what the NFL and Florida, Alabama, and Ohio State is about. You know, not in a bad way, but that's just the you know the society that we live in. You think the NFL will have a, a star player? Because we don't have a lot of openly gay NFL players. Mm -hmm. You think that's something that's going to happen sometime soon? Mm, well, what was no. the guy? Michael Sam? Yeah, every time. Yeah. Somebody, hey, he, they, every time <laughs> not somebody, a lot. He, he yeah, could play, every, and they got rid of him right, real quick. Every time somebody <laughs> comes out and openly, you know, expresses themselves or, you know, want to come out the closet and be brave, they're jobless. Yep. So I don't think it's advantageous for anybody, you know, like I said, if that's what you do, then just keep it, stay in the closet. Otherwise, you're gonna be jobless. Did yeah. either of that, either of y'all, have players in the locker room that y'all knew? I've never, I've, I've never, never known one. Yeah, yeah. I've never yeah, known I've never one. Been in a situation where I even even suspected it. Right, right. You have guys we joke around, but I mean, right, yeah. What, when, <laughs> joke around the way, they, the way they dress. That's yeah, something we went right. like. Oh, got you, like got the, you. the shirt that dude had on, he got to be, you know. Right. But yeah, you yeah, don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, what I'm saying? funny games, jokes, but. Other than that, nothing, you know, that I've seen, no one that I've seen has been open. So your advice would be stay in the closet if you're in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to really have <laughs> an NFL career, like, otherwise, what is your point of really coming out? If you mm. want to be an advocate for the LB LGBT community. Matthew's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just go do that. Mm -hmm. Hash, what yeah. are your thoughts? Uh, I, yeah, I, again, that Michael Sam scenario, 
a couple years back. When, I think when did he get drafted? Did he get drafted? He, he got, got drafted. seventh round. Yeah. <clears throat> but he was out of the league so quick. It didn't last. Like it, said, it, it doesn't help. But was and he I, really good though? He was good enough. enough. Yeah, 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 he was yeah, good yeah. enough to to Maybe get a couple not. years, <clears throat> and then after that, like I said, see if he can get in his fourth, fifth year, or something like that. But they really treat anyone who doesn't fit that criteria, and they get him out the league. Because if you really look at it, the the T.O. scenario, the Michael Sam scenario, not in that scenario. No. No, no, I know you're you got I, your confidence. Okay, <laughs> not me. I'm waiting to see uh, where he goes with this. Get and, your popcorn. And, 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 the, and, the, and, and the Tim, and the, and the, and the Tim <laughs> Tebow scenario. It's really all the same. They're three way different type of scenario. religion, religion, sex, sexuality, and a bad character. But they get them. You out see more so of the tos though. More well, the bad character attitude. Ego. You think. Not until they do something. Like if you see bad character, like like he had when you're in your first. I've never really done anything. (laughs) Well, let's let's say if he would have did that when he was in his first or second year, he would have never made it for for 15 years. That you have to perform Mm. first. Got you. You see what I'm saying? So again, those whole scenarios, like you don't get to perform unless you're like that good that early, and then we're gonna give you some leeway later on. But the Michael Sam never got there. He didn't come in and have 15 sacks in preseason, so we get rid of him. Mm. So question, that could be like kind of Colin Kaepernick situation too, right? Same, exact same scenario, right? Do, Do not move the needle in the negative direction, else we will get rid of you. What did you think of his workout? Do you think he should be in the league after watching this workout? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. After the workout, had no, that had nothing to do with it. That had nothing I mean, to do with it. To me, he should he should have been there three years ago, um, but at the same time, Cap did pass up contracts that were on the table because he wanted more money, so that's on him. Right, um, but he wanted fair value for what he was But who says it's fair? Because Based on his production, look at the no, guy. Look, no, look at the guys no, that he, no. That you can compare him to. You can't compare him to nobody. Okay. Why? Why not? Because his 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 numbers and his Super Bowls, let's say, because he didn't have it right. You only let's, good as your last game. So again, if you compare his stats to when he left the game versus the guys that are playing now, mm-hmm. that's what they were him, gonna. They wanted him. to pay him like a backup. Right. right but when, what it, what years was this? Was he passing up contracts? Because I've heard that's not true. That exactly. he didn't pass up no contracts. It's just hearsay. Uh, about three, four years ago. What is the number? What numbers was it that he was passing up? Nobody knows. Yeah, know, nobody T. knows. I don't know. But I heard it was market value. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. But but what you're saying is he should have been getting paid like the top 20 guys. That's what he there thought. Are guys that are... I didn't think he was a top 20 guy. I thought he could play. I thought he should be in the NFL for sure. He could be battling for a starting position. And you, you treat it the same way. When you're a free agent... And somebody's like, okay, you can come here and you can compete for a job. Some players don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. Some people want to hear, I'm the starter. And like I said, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what he wanted to hear, but he didn't want to hear, you have to compete for this job. And then if... He didn't want to go through what Melo went through, where Melo went through a team and had to play as a star for a, a star position. There you go. But he did, and he is But he now. did, and now he's back playing, but you have to go through that process. We're not just going to give it to you, especially black athletes. They don't just give it to you, especially in the NFL. Uh, like, there's a bunch of 5, 10... 180 pound white quarterbacks that are third string guys they keep around for four or five sometimes six seven years in the NFL you'll never hear hear about them but they're not moving the needle mm-hmm. if you're not if you're moving the needle you better be good dang near great and that's what the NFL but is about but he's better than those guys those backup but guys. he can't get paid like a third year guy a third a third string that's what you just said he wanted more money we're gonna pay you like a but third or second money? stringer I mean, nobody knows what you're saying I know what a, a, a backup quarterback gets paid he gets but, paid four million dollars a year but he but, wants ten. I think he's worth that. But you're not the GM or the owner, right, so but I'm your not opinion talking doesn't about matter. It. it doesn't matter. That's not the point that I'm making. I'm saying, I'm saying that he's worth that. So if he turns to it down, you, not to 32 other teams, right? But they're not. They they don't really. They hold the cards. They they right, they have they, the paycheck, right? But you think of the Blaine Gabbers that again pay the Nick Foles, God. all the Jared Goffs. Like you don't, you can't put him in. That. No, he's, he's not just as good. He's, just, he's yes, not he just is. as good as those guys. You I don't. I, I again, I'm not. The league a, changes not a, every year, though. Absolutely. So three years is a long time. It's a long I time. It, but I feel like he can be that guy. Now, what given about? the opportunity, there are a lot of guys that look at what Baker Mayfield did this year. He was well, supposed to be that guy too. And no, no, no. You thought he was supposed to be no, that guy. No. I knew he wasn't that. <laughs> Guess what? The great. guys that you just said hold the cards. They thought he was that guy. So I did back because to my I'm point. smarter than those guys. So this is what we can hear on the Get to Popcorn that's podcast. What I'm, trying to tell you. I'm smarter <laughs> than those guys. But you, but you, you said, said they hold the cards. They, they hold yeah. the cards. Absolutely. How long is this podcast? Y'all seem like y'all just going forever, man. Till 2065, we're gonna be on here. I feel like he deserves a shot. And if if that's the case, pay the man what he's worth. 
worth. Okay, a shot well, is I'm different than payment. Why, why, a shot why is the value you're saying? You're not in his shoes. You're not for, either. For a, guy, for a guy that's not c comparable to his talent, then yeah, of course you're going to say that. Damn. Wait, was that? Wow, was that a stab? Wow. I, I wasn't I'm sure. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you the reason that you're turning. But if you, if, if you don't know, I told you, you like that, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a free agent then once. Gonna, I was a free agent once. I was a free agent. Your free, your fair market value. Yeah. But you're wow. not, okay, but the 32 teams say what you're worth and say what you're going to get, right? That's, that's, that's fair to say. The th they, they hold the cards and saying what your worth is, right? Throughout, comparing you throughout everybody else, right? Right. But okay. you have to compare him, compare him to what's already been, that's out there on the market at the same time okay. as well. Okay. And so Hats, you, what you're saying is there were offers on the table, though. Um, I, heard that's not true, though. I heard there was there were a certain amount of true. offers to come into camp that were on the table. But and what he, were they? That's well, that, that's irrelevant. Yeah, I heard that's that irrelevant. wasn't true. I heard that's, it was like the Denver back in the day when he first got released from the 49ers. But right. other than that, I don't think it was anything. Well, well okay, table. let's use that example, that Denver example, mm -hmm. right? Why not go to Denver and prove yourself that you're a starting quarterback in the NFL? That's all I'm saying. If but he's if you that feel good, like because you're more worth more than that, why go in there and feel like you have to go in there? And because everybody's got to go again. prove themselves again. No, he's already again. played in the league. He got to the Super Bowl. He was a top quarterback. So why you got to go in there and re approve yourself again? I can't pay you now based off your best year. Though. Thank you. You are not getting paid but today for yesterday's game. But it's not going to happen. It's not how it works. Really? Not, not that's for black quarterbacks. No. But I just, I just it, look at Melo, and, and Melo had to do the same thing. Melo was scoring, what, 25, 28 points when he was playing. They dropped right. him, and then three years later, he had to prove himself. He, he had to prove himself. And that's the league with money. That's every single sport. Every single player, you got to prove yourself again, right. right? And if you do that, then they're going to give you more money. Now, that's different than some of those other scenarios out there, the Tom Brady scenarios and the Drew Brees scenarios. Those are way different type of things. But 99% of all players got to do that over and over and over again. Now, this time you mentioned Tom Brady, does he stay with New England or is he out of there? Oof. Oof. I think it's either the L.A. Chargers or the New England Patriots. Does he just leave after all these years? I don't think he leaves. I think he wants to get courted. And wants to try this free agency thing out because he's never been in this scenario and he's probably gonna, you know, enjoy I, it a little bit. I but. feel it's a similar situation with Peyton Manning in Indianapolis Colts. Nobody saw Peyton leaving the, the Indy Colts, Colts yeah. but yeah. he ended up going to Denver. Yeah, this is a similar a situation. And then now you hear you you hear Colin Coward talking about him going to the Dallas Cowboys. They have everything. That's not gonna happen. But guess what? When I said it. I was people yeah, said that I was crazy. Stupid. Brady to the Cowboys. I, I call, yeah, that's he what, said that, and I was like, "You're an idiot." But now, that'll never what, happen. A, Colin Coward just <laughs> said it. He has everything in place. The brand. And, and he has O line. That's he has a everything stupid better scenario. Than what he had in New England. That'd be so disrespectful to Dak. I'm a Cowboy fan. So no, no, disrespectful to Dak. But that'd be saying, so disrespectful. Can like I said, nobody thought Peyton would lead the Indianapolis Colts. But in this scenario, if you're already you're a free agent, you're trying to possibly make a change no. if you don't want to just stay there if you don't want to be like a Kobe or whatever the main, be a mainstay mm -hmm. or a Tim Duncan be there for an entirety of your career and then you want to just do something different relocate and try something no. and you want to try to go for a, another Super Bowl why not go to a team that's that's really mm -hmm. advantageous to your skill set and or, knowing uh, that you're already like I said people are already saying you're old but if you got Ezekiel no. Ed, Elliott you got receivers and Gallup and those guys over there you have a defense uh, an you organization have, is already, not going to give up the next 10 years for the next two. I would hope not. That, I, that'd be the... <laughs> that'd be the, the thing. Thing. So you never know. Uh, it's all, that would, right now, Jerry Jones, right. he's looking about us. He wants a Super Bowl He might right not be alive now. in 10 years. So you why would he take that gamble? He's done it before. What's the problem with the Cowboys, you think? Well, they got rid of They, they just got rid of him. Jason Garrett, right? They that's your guy. That's just, your man. They just got rid of him. That, yeah. That's another one of his boys. I think this is a year that they progress. Really? Where the, where they go? Who knows? I always felt like Jason Garrett was uh, he was part of that culture of mediocrity that the Cowboys have just been used to for mm. so long. Yep. So you didn't like him when you were there. At our first year, he was uh, he was the offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, Wade Phillips was the the head coach, and then he ended up getting Wade fired. He got Wade up out of there. Mm -hmm. Then he ended up getting getting the head coaching job. We did uh, we did well our first year. Then we kind of fell off the second year. Uh, I played three years there. And then they and he ended up getting me up out of there. Mm -hmm. So you know, like I said, when I left there, I said nothing's going to change. Nothing is going to change with him at the head as, as the head coach. And I I said it then and still today. Like I said, it it holds to be true. Do you think Tony Romo is a better quarterback or announcer? Mm. 
announcer. Wow. And I think because of School. How being a quarterback? That's your, that's you, your quarterback, though. Yeah, that's that's what you cried. You, that's your, you no, cried. No, no, you yeah. I get it. you, I get you it, opened up like, your heart and opened. Right, <laughs> but again, just because you're a good quarterback, I mean, a, a good announcer doesn't make you a great quarterback. Um, sometimes, like your inefficiencies, you said a better announcer than a. Be, than, I don't know about that. He was a pretty good quarterback. I, I'm not. He was a pretty. He was a I very, was, very I'm, good I'm quarterback. I don't think he was a Hall of Famer, but I think he was a good quarterback. I never said he wasn't a good quarterback, but he's better at announcing. And everybody sees that because he's a quarterback. You, you have so many responsibilities as a, as a quarterback. You read the you read the defenses. You have to go through progressions. Um, these are some of the things that, as an as an as an announcer, now he's basically he's a quarterback. Yeah. So he's yeah. seeing the field. Yeah, mm-hmm. He's basically yeah. expressing and articulating to the audience what, what he he, he sees, would do it in film. Right. What, what he sees as yeah. as, a, as a quarterback. This is all, this is almost like film study for it him. It is. Yep. But he's basically articulating it to the world, kind of what he sees through his eyes. So again, it's amazing, you know, for everybody that hasn't seen this type of for thing us, it's just film study for, for an announcer. Yeah. Um, so again, like I said, I never said he was a bad quarterback, but is he a better uh, announcer than a quarterback? I think so. Do you have a relationship, especially after no, you, we cool. that, like, that we interview cool. when you did cry and everything? Did he? That had to be touching to him, right? Right. I mean, he never said anything about it. Really? Um, but that that was just me. Like, I would have sent people... flowers. <laughs> I would, for sure. Right? For sure. Cool arrangement. My man, the... my guy, he cried for me, dog. That's but cool, that's the, man. But that's the thing about me. Like I said, I, I know I was a good teammate, regardless of what the media has said and what's out there. Um, like I said, I've done a number of great things for my teammates. I was the ultimate consummate pro. I feel like me understanding... Uh, what a number one receiver is supposed to be. It's not just getting the ball. Um, it's blocking. It's doing other things. Um, being a decoy at times. Um, these are things that people wouldn't know because media are not. They're not going to do their do their due diligence to find out that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. It, when it came to me, you know, you have a hero and a villain. You know, during the, my career, I was the villain. So they're not going to do those. <laughs> sens- You're still the villain. Type of stories about me. Facts. Those feel good stories. That's not what they're going to do. No. Matthew, let me ask you a question. Does To take personal accountability for anything he does? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a okay. lot of it. Not okay. not all the time. He always try to. No, I, I agree. Sometime, like, could I have done a lot the, of the time. some things differently or better during mm. the course of my career? Absolutely. Um, but that that comes with mm-hmm. with with maturation, mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. maturation process. Um, I've never, n- never felt like I didn't take accountability mm-hmm. for anything. But if somebody's given false information about me, then yeah, Stick I'm going to defend. I'm going to defend myself to the nth degree. And I think, um, I think for on um, every job organization out there across the world, if you work with a hundred people, there's always going to be two or three people you don't like or don't get along with. That's absolutely. just every, so it doesn't matter. People think, well, since it's the NFL, since there's 53 guys on the field with the same uniform on, they're all best friends. That's not true. Like I said, you're going to get your five, six dudes you really rock with. Um, besides that, say you're cordial to a couple. And then the other dudes, you like I said, there's a, I played with people who are racist, but on Sunday it didn't matter. And on Friday, it's not like he was at home talking behind my back. It just is what it is. And so I think all those things that you say, you're talking about the longevity of, of the, what the the media has done to T. I go, it's it's all BS because coming from a personal point, uh, personal position, and for the most part, it's again, you're not gonna like everybody. What do you, Matthew, think, about do you, think, that, oh, what do you think about Odell as a player, as a receiver? Because it seems like they're villainizing him right now. Um, definitely has has the talent. I think the thing now is just social media has created, you know, uh, put him in, in mm. such a a, a stardom um, type of atmosphere, and mm. again, he realizes what social media can do for you. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me, um, when he made that catch, that mm-hmm. put him through the stratosphere. Um, but in order to, I guess, be an elite receiver or be considered great, you have to perform on a consistent basis. Mm-hmm. And I think now that's what he has to do more so of is re- play, on a, play on a better and consistent uh, level. Mm-hmm. What do you think about him sexually assaulting that guy in the locker room? <laughs> Shut up, man. I mean, I can't, like, sometimes I don't use, you know, Oh, the cop that slapped on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't Hilarious. explain why people do certain <laughs> things, but I mean, once you're under Did that you see juice, that? you have, you I mean, that juice gives you a lot of courage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do a little bit more than what you think, and then sometimes that was you funny. feel like you're bigger than life, and you can get away with certain things, and I'm sure in that moment, 
the, the team just won. They're in the locker room having a great time. And she's high. And he, right. And he it's just hilarious. didn't think anything of it. Have either one of y'all got your ass slapped in the locker room after a big win? I'm pretty sure Matt had. I have. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just call me Matt? Yeah, yeah Matt. <laughs> Matt. Wow. Matt. <laughs> Matt. My that goodness. Is the worst. I went from Matt to Matt. Oh, well, get Lord, your popcorn ready. No, I, wanna, I gotta ask about Donovan GPR. McNabb because you was, he was nasty. He's been talking. You know, you've been saying about how your that teammates shit. love you and stuff. But Donovan yeah, McNabb had like some you. things to say. He said that you're. Yeah, there's always two or three people that don't like that's one of the two. Negligence and inappropriate behavior. I'm glad you say that because even you know, like I said, there's there's some inaccuracies. Not factual stuff that even Skip said. I, I I heard an exchange a couple of weeks ago he had with with Shannon, you know, saying that uh, McNabb, you know, challenged me to a fight and I backed down. He you said down? J, he said Jason Witten challenged me to a fight and I backed down. First wow, of all, wow. Neither one. You of them sound don't like want a punk. Shit. Trust me, neither one of them <laughs> don't want this problem. And when I got in a scuffle with Hugh Douglas. It that was, was a real it, story. Right, it yeah, was I heard what that it was. I went into that locker room after that, and I saw Donovan in there, and he knew what had just happened. And I asked him. And you said the same thing. You want a piece said, of me, old exactly. man? He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked, I said, if you want some of this, you, you can get some of it too. So you put your hands on Hugh Douglas? Yeah, for real. Dude, for real. I had them like all up said, in the bro, locker. Wow. Yeah, I heard it about that one. It didn't matter who you were or whatever. My grandma always told me, like, when I was younger, don't don't come back to this house with with a butt whooping. Yeah. And if they bigger than you, pick up some, hit them, and run. <laughs> Why are you Douglas though? What was that? Why Douglas? Wow. Um, <laughs> I I mean he was he was brought on as like a brand ambassador. I mean a team ambassador or some some title that they gave him. And so for whatever reason, <laughs> did you just call him a mascot, man? <laughs> I don't know what was going on. What his title was. Um, but I, I was, I was in the, I was in the, uh, in the training room. I was getting treatment or what have you, and I was in the HydroWorks pro pool. So it's kind of, kind of like this, and it was separated by glass or whatever. So he, the door was cracked, and he was yelling through the door or from the outside, and I heard him, and he was like, "Yeah, some people in here faking injuries, this, that, and the other." <laughs> and I, you know, found it disrespectful considering I'm known for hard work. Like, why would I need to be in here just to be wasting time? So I got up out of the water. Went and got my shoes, um, and then again, you know, addressed the situation. We got in a little scuffle, this, and that, and the other. It wasn't really any blows thrown, but like I said, I handled my own. So you um, fought you, Douglas, then you went and challenged Donovan McNabb to a duel, <laughs> and you wonder why they said you was kind of disruptive in the locker room, to you. <laughs> and Donovan McNabb said no, just to be clear, he didn't want. Oh, it. he didn't. He didn't want none okay. of this. Trust me, he didn't want none of that. And at the end of the day, like I said. I'm not a violent guy, but like I said, you're not going to disrespect me. You know what I mean? Um, you can see how that can be misconstrued, like you can be disruptive in a locker room. <laughs> but what about, you didn't say nothing about uh, Hugh, Hugh Douglas. Yeah. Being disruptive in a locker he, room. He's, he, he's the one that started it. Yeah. So I didn't, again, it's, it's, you see know, how, see how yeah, that you, got you, I got you. you, like, you oh, know I'm how disrupted, but I didn't, I didn't start anything. Now Hatch, how would you tell, say some of the other players to handle a situation like that? Like that right there? Oh, y'all yeah. yeah, just stopped playing. Cause I, knowing Hugh, Right. No, no, no. He, First of all, that wasn't a plan. It wasn't a plan matter. I get that. No, yeah. I'm just saying, knowing Hugh, Hugh probably said it in a joking way. No, 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 right? No, 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 listen, right? He probably it said it in a joking been. way. Right? T.O. was like, I was there. T.O. was not in the room. No, no, no. Now he's making it as a No, I said, in my opinion. Right. But you a jokester, but you. I'm giving Let me get to the story. Because I know I know you. I play with you, right? No, but it wasn't that type of Shut up. He was joking. He was joking. So he was joking. And let's just say a little bit, right? But T was not in a joking mood at the time. I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't play with me. So you Number, took it seriously, according seriously, to this scenario right? from Hatch. Now, when they probably get in front of each other, is there's no game. Nobody's backing down. Nobody's backing down. You know what I'm saying? So then, like, T go say something, he go say something. Matthew go, throws T on the floor. So Absolutely. Put my wrong. heel in his face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, I'm going to so. say something. I'm always rooting for everybody black. You and Jason Witten, I might have to go with Jason Witten, man. <laughs> In the fight. Well, I mean, you can go with that. Go with that. What you think, man? Hey. Oh. I, I didn't see. He, he, he has this thing. It's a different level of strength. He's got like that old country strength. Like, yeah, so he'll yeah, put 225 yeah, 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 yeah. on the bar. He probably barely go do it. But he's like that old country boy strength where, like, when he has to do something, he's got to lift a car. <laughs> you like, God. Yeah, he's one of those dudes. Did you but, and Jason do that? But that's the thing. Is like, it never happened? Jay, J Jason, Witten and I, we. There's never been any altercation. Any beef anyway. That's yeah. the thing. 
So yeah. I don't need, like I said, that's why. So I, where does Kim I, get that from? I I don't know. And again, when you have an audience like that, that's 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 BS journalism. You mm-hmm. just gotcha. can't Bad do stuff like that. Right. And so again, it has people looking at me sideways and questioning my character, which they've done the entirety of my career, based on guys like him, the Mark Sclares, and you know people piggybacking on information that they've heard through other media outlets. And then you have guys that are out of the league, they get in the league, and then they know as a player, you should at least take care of your own. But then they get in there and now they they they, they <laughs> change their tune. Mm-hmm. Now they're they're on the side of the media, so they piggybacking and echoing everything that they're did saying. You, let, did let you me, fight let, anybody in the Cowboys locker room? No. No scuffles, no nothing? Let, here. I almost got into it with the receiver coach, Todd Haley. Okay. Yeah, and that, that was a bad I, one. I, 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 that outside, was a bad one. I want to hear about it. One. Outside, outside of that, that was it. Tell me, Matt, cause, no. Matthew, because he's not going to tell me the whole stuff. Well, no, I only seen it from the the TV portion of the <laughs> of the of the game. So he was, you know, probably the ball didn't wasn't coming your way. No, you t- no, that's 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 uh, Greg now. Oh, Greg, yeah, yeah. No, that's, no, a, that's, 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 another, people, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. What happened with the guy, the Todd Haley guy? Yeah, tell. So, I don't, I don't really, honestly, I don't remember exactly what it was, but <laughs> shoving, we, pushing. No, we just got in a... No, they ain't never go nah, put yeah. hands on. He would never nah, put hands nah, on I a coach. I ain't never do that. I'm never going to disrespect anybody unless they put their hands on me. I've but let me been. let me ask you this as a table, right? Mm-hmm. If if just your, your eyeballs, right? You see a white dude and a black dude fighting in the street mm-hmm. and a cop comes up. They're both two feet away. If a cop comes up, who's the cop going to stop first? The black dude. The black guy. guy. Yeah. That, that was just him. You see what I'm saying? It had nothing to do with... Nobody even knows all these situations. Right. But if he just, took you know his what? shades off, he'd look just, less suspicious. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah. Why do you have your sunglasses on, man? <laughs> my future is bright, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my yes. hey, G, G, I'm here in the Breakfast Club. I mean, I, this is an honor for me to be here, honestly. Like, we have you here. I, I've, I've watched you know, snippets you know, uh, of the show. You have a number of guests on. Like I said, this is, this is, this is an honor to be here, to be honest. My last question, do you see any... GPR. you see any similarities between T.O. and Antonio Brown? Um, no, not at all. What about the situation? The situation, um, the way the media is perceiving it, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but them personally, no. Nah, like I said, the the misunderstood and all that. I mean, that's the a media portion. But as far as like football on the field, not really. Like I said, it's they're two totally different characters. I think careers are totally different. Um, like I said, Antonio Brown's run when he was going to Super Bowls, don't mm-hmm. forget, he was a second and third receiver at the time. He wasn't that dude. Yeah. Um, then when he became that dude, though his teams haven't been winning. So T's career was totally pretty much almost the opposite he wasn't that dude um then he became that dude and the team was winning so that to me that those are two different stratospheres and one thing you both can agree on is that to should have been one of the nfl's all-time 100 right we uh, um, i kind of like that he's not wow. in it wow because now we're on the like, same wow. level That's your guy too. we're on the same level though we but, both didn't make it what about top 10 wide receivers should he should have made that Oh, he definitely should have made that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not even close. You but know again, what I'm saying? That's, but I've been like th- these are the things that I've been forced to kind of digest throughout mm-hmm. the course of my career. Like I said, I wasn't looked at, uh, looked upon to be like the next Jerry Rice. You know, what I mean, when I left high school, went to UT Chattanooga. Honestly, I never had any ambition. Never thought I would play beyond the collegiate level. Um, I just became very competitive. I started to realize my talent. Essentially, I became, I was a late bloomer. Um, and then things just kind of just started to unfold. Um, I played three years of basketball uh, at UT Chattanooga. Even my last year, um, the school wanted me not to play my last year of football, I mean basketball, because they thought it like, you know, you got a chance to play in the NFL. But in my mind, I didn't think I was. I didn't think I was good enough to play at the next level. But with my work ethic, my competitiveness, um, it enabled me to do the things that I did on the football field. And so then you, I get drafted third round, 89th pick to the Niners. Um, here I am, I'm with Jerry Rice. I didn't, I didn't even really watch football growing up. I mm-hmm. didn't really know who Jerry Rice was to like my junior year in college. I hate that. So, <laughs> I, Cause I'm such a football guy and I wanted all that. And here's a guy that says he didn't want all that and he got it, I want to choke him out right, right now. Right. Right. And that's the thing, it's like my drive, like I said, my competitiveness. I mean, like I said, it probably even drove people not to even like me. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, I know I was a good teammate. Um, I understood my role. Once I got to be a number one receiver, I learned a lot from Jerry Rice. Um, understanding, like I said, I benefited, you know, from him being that number one guy. J.J. Stokes was looked at, looked upon to be the next heir mm-hmm. uh, to Jerry Rice. 
And so man, Jerry gave you the game. There was no jealousy, no animosity of the young guy coming up. No, dude. I until was, Jerry Day. Jerry no, Day was with his last game in San Fran. There was, like I said, there was no animosity ever with myself and Jerry. Like I said, I just man, I was a product of my environment. I learned. I listened. I was very coachable. Um, the coaches that I had. I'm very thankful and I'm, I'm very grateful for it because they groomed me. They saw the potential in me to to, to be as good as uh, I became, and so that's 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 what I tip my and, and hang my hat on. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, I know there's a lot of perceptions uh, about me because of some of the things throughout the course of my career. And I like the question that you asked: had, you know, have I ever been accountable? Mm -hmm. Yes, nobody would know ever know that because of how how powerful the media is and the, and how narrative driven um, they've been about who I am in the locker room and my character. That's why I did, uh, I took the stance that I did, not even to go to the Hall of Fame because I felt it was disrespectful for me to do the things that I did that was comparable to all the greats, especially receivers um, at that time, being number number two, number three, uh, behind the best, the greatest receiver of all time and not put me in where I rightfully belong because that's what I earned. Nobody gave me anything. All right. All right. I gotta subscribe to this podcast, man. You don't, right. long, you don't know how long you don't know how long T.O. breaks this team up. Yeah, all right. <laughs> fight later on today with Hatch. All right. <laughs> Matthew, Hatch. <laughs> Matthew Hatch, we appreciate you guys for joining oh, us. Oh, thanks for having us, guys. Man, we appreciate, appreciate it, man. It, Hashtag been, GPR. Yeah, this is this has been an honor, man. This has been great. Y'all can come right. back up anytime, too, man. Absolutely. We'd love for y'all to come back up. Absolutely. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yeet.